Hello, and welcome to Prince George's Community College presentation of the Faculty Woodwind Trio Concert. I am Professor Lori Fowser, and I teach clarinet and saxophone here at the college. I will be joined by Professor Dennis Karp on flute and our guest pianist, Heather Adelsberger. We will be performing a combination of trios and solo pieces for flute, clarinet, and piano. We hope you enjoy the concert, and thank you for tuning in. Hello. The selection we would like to play for you is the Premier Rhapsody by Claude Debussy. It was written in 1910 as a contest piece for students at the Paris Conservatory. Um, Debussy was a French Impressionist composer. Uh, in the art world, Impressionism started in the 19, or 1870s with paintings by Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir, and others. Uh, in these paintings, um, characteristics are blurry images, no sharp contours, vibrant colors. Often there are outdoor scenes and um, focusing on the movement of light and water and leaves and wind. Um, now, Debussy didn't necessarily approve of the term impressionism as used for music, but it is the label that historians and music critics have put upon him, and I can't help but thinking of a musical equivalent of a Claude Monet painting when I hear or play this piece. This is the Premier Rhapsody by Claude Debussy.
the next selection we would like to play for you is Victor's Tale from the motion picture The Terminal by John Williams. Uh, director Steven Spielberg often turned to John Williams for his, his uncanny ability to write music that tells a story behind characters or events in a movie. Um, and this piece is no exception. Um, the Terminal came out in 2004. It starred Tom Hanks as a, a displaced traveler from a, a, a fictional Eastern European country. And uh, during his travels, his country dissolves with a political coup. And so his passport is no longer valid. So he spends most of the movie in the airport terminal because they won't let him travel anywhere. And uh, John Williams used uh, modal melodies from that is our traditional in gypsy and klezmer music of the, that region to help capture Victor's ethnic heritage. This is Victor's tale from the motion picture The Terminal by John Williams.
Joseph Boulogne Chevalier de Saint George was born on December 25th, 1745, on an island in the Caribbean. His father, George Boulogne, was a wealthy fl French planter, and his mother, from Senegal in Africa, was the enslaved handmaid of Boulogne's wife. His father actually acknowledged his illegitimate son, and in order to provide him with the best education available, at the age of seven, the family moved to Paris. After his graduation, he was knighted, thus earning the title of Chevalier de Saint-Georges. He was an excellent dancer, boxer, runner, swimmer, marksman, ice skater, violinist, and harpsichordist, but he became very famous for his fencing ability. Uh, he even earned the nickname the God of Arms. He was very popular, um, especially among women and royalty, but sadly still faced a lot of racism at his time. Uh, he was Marie Antoinette's music teacher until he was fired when they became too close. Um, but she remained a major supporter of his music and accompanied him on piano and also had him in line to become the director of the Paris Opera. But unfortunately, several sopranos sent a petition saying they would not perform under the direction of someone of mixed race. So to save any embarrassment, he withdrew his name. Uh, he fought in the French Revolution as a colonel. Uh, he served with the father of the French novelist Alexandre Dumas, and it is believed that the character of Aramis from The Three Musketeers was inspired by him. Uh, during the war, he was wrongfully imprisoned for over a year without ever being charged a crime. Uh, he was eventually released, but he was never able to return to his lifestyle. Um, and although he was incredibly popular during his lifetime, President John Adams once called him the most accomplished man in Europe, he died poor at the age of 53. Uh, only about a third of his manuscripts have survived, and he was largely forgotten until just recent decades, and especially over the past year or so. Um, please take some time to read some more about him or watch one of the many documentaries about him. Uh, this piece was originally written for a violin and piano, but it has become a favorite among flutists recently and was just published a few months ago for flute and piano. This is Joseph Boulogne's Sonata Number no. 1 in B-flat major.
John Rutter is an English composer born in 1945. He's mainly known for his choral works. Um, the Sweet Antique was a piece that was written for a concert performed along with Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 5, so he decided to write it for the same instrumentation, for flute, harpsichord, and strings. He later arranged it for flute and piano. It consists of six movements. Uh, you'll hear a lot of different styles. You'll hear some Baroque influence. You'll hear some jazz influence and pretty much everything in between. It's a lot of fun to play. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
The selection we would like to play for you now is Tarantella, Opus 6, by the ro French Romantic composer Camille Sanson. Uh, a Tarantella is traditionally a fast 6-8 dance, and it takes its name from the Taranto region of Italy. And hundreds of years ago, it was thought to be the cure for the bite of the wolf spider that comes from that region, or the tarantula in Italian. Uh, the faster you dance, the more effective it is to get rid of the poison. I wouldn't trust that medical advice today. <laughs> uh, Sansons wrote this piece in 1857 when he was only 22. And the much older Italian opera composer Giacchino Rossini helped promote Sansons' work by hosting a premiere of this piece at his home in Paris, and it was very successful. 20 years later, Sansons also published it as um, an orchestra accompaniment instead of piano, but the original is the trio that we're playing today. So this is the Tarantella, Opus 6, by Camille Sansons.
The next selection we'd like to play for you is the concertino for flute, clarinet, and piano by the Swiss composer Ernest, Ernest Bloch. Uh, Bloch was born in Switzerland and immigrated to the U.S. in 1916, where he spent most of the rest of his life. Uh, aside from being a prolific composer, he was also a professor at several prominent U.S. conservatories and had a lasting impact on music education in this country, college music education. Uh, this piece was commissioned by the Juilliard School in 1948 for flute, viola, and string orchestra. Um, we have one of those things on the stage today. Um, two years later, he published it for um, a piano reduction of the string orchestra and also with an optional clarinet part instead of viola. So that's the the arrangement we're going to play for you today. Um, it's in three movements. There's not much of a pause between them. They're fast, slow, fast. The first one has um, modal melodies and uh, polyphony, both of which are common in Jewish melodies. Bloch was a Jewish composer, by the way. Uh, the second movement is a reflective chorale, kind of slow. The third one starts with a fast fugue and ends with a rollicking polka. So we hope you enjoy the concertino today for flute, clarinet, and piano by Ernest Bloch. Thank you. 
Ernesto Cavallini was born in Italy in 1807, and throughout his life he toured through Europe. Uh, he was a very famous clarinetist. Uh, he was known as the Paganini of the clarinet. Um, and inspired by Cavallini's playing, Verdi wrote several clarinet solos in his operas. Some of them were written specifically for him to perform. So he spent about 15 years uh, teaching in Russia at the St. Petersburg Conservatory. And this piece was written during that time, around 1864. This is the Reverie Russe. It was written for him to perform along with the flute teacher there. Uh, it consists of an introduction, a theme, and several variations. So hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.